our work is showing two things in terms of the soil, that when you obey the law of the recycling, which is called the law of return, you give back to the earth in gratitude, you actually have more food. You know, people think if you give, you have less. But that's only the greedy mind that doesn't know. A mother knows the more she gives her baby, the happier the baby is, the happier she is. The soil, the more you give to the soil, the more the soil gives you. And I want to just share with you two um, figures from our research and our practice. You know, even climate change, which in my view is a metabolic disorder of the planet. You know, the planet manages her own climate. And just like we get the metabolic disorders like diabetes when we eat junk, the earth has a metabolic disorder when we shift from real energy, living energy, to junk energy or fossil fuels. It is a metabolic disorder. Think of it. But how can you repair it? Just like you repair the metabolic disorders of the health, of our bodies. Heal the cycle. Give back. So when we give back organic matter, you know, we, we worked with the top soil ecologist of India. And he did a study for us 10 years, and now he's done it for 20 years of comparing chemical systems with organic systems. And let me just show you with you the data. Organic matter in chemical farms is down by 14%. Organic matter in organic farms is up by 99%. We think by adding synthetic nitrogen fertilizers, which is made by using two liters of diesel to produce one kilogram of nitrogen. And Bill Gates is promoting nitrogen fertilizers as a climate solution when nitrogen fertilizers emit a greenhouse gas, nitrous oxide, which is 300 times more damaging to the climate. And all the scientific studies are showing that the worst violation of the planetary boundaries, the boundaries of the earth, you know, I, I'm sorry I don't do PowerPoints, but that is the planetary boundary graph made by the Stockholm Institute. What are the limits we have crossed? The red is the total danger zone. The green is the safe zone. Uh, the danger zone is species extinction. Your chemicals in agriculture don't just kill you with cancer. They push species to extinction. The big overshoot is nitrogen. And that's what the brilliant, richest man financing climate solutions and giving advice to your president, Biden, on climate solutions. He wants to make this rupture even worse. The reason your conference is so important is because money is taking us into a place where there will be no future for humanity. Extinction is predictable. But because they live in the illusion, oh, we've always overcome, we've always overcome. They're thinking, oh, kill the earth, go to Mars. Mars has no life. There is no planet B. Except we know that while they create the illusion of going to Mars, they allow that to take over all of the lands of the indigenous people. I was talking about the phrases nature-based solution and the other is half for nature and then zero, net zero. Net zero means I'll pollute, but I will control your farm so that you can be a carbon sink for me. It's called offsets in the climate language. But if I go through two other elements in, in our farming systems, so zinc is a very, very important. Uh, trace element, 37% less, 38% less in the chemical soils and 14% more in the organic soils. And manganese, 17% less, 14% more in our soils. So we are basically creating nutritionally empty commodities which are generating super profits for agribusiness, technology, the cargoes of the world, and because the ones who sell the chemicals, the same IG farmer, are the ones who are big pharma, you know, buyer. Buyer is a drug industry. So big pharma 
The poison, as poison creators, they create disease. As big pharma, they bring you the solution and get you deeper into debt and get your bodies. I mean, look at the data on iatrogenesis, this, you know, hospital and medicine induced diseases. So when we add to the soil buildup of organic matter, the intensification of biodiversity, our data on nutrition per acre is showing that we have 106% more copper, 61% more magnesium, 243% more molybdenum, 64% more zinc, 72% all trace elements taken together compared to the chemical monocultures. Here is an option for us to grow food aligned with ecological laws, which are the laws of nature. And these laws, what I've learned over my four decades of study in the food system, the law of diversity. Monocultures is a violence against the law of nature. Nature never grows a monoculture plantation. The colonials did. They took Africans as slaves after having grabbed the land of the Native Americans and turned that into a plantation economy. Or they took my people from India and then took them to the Caribbean islands, took them to South Africa, took them to Mauritius to turn them into indentured labor because by then abolition didn't allow slavery. So monocultures are a residue of the plantation economy of colonialism. Diversity is the evolution and co-evolution with nature according to nature's laws. And diversity is health. Let me just share with you some, you know, we knew it. I mean, in Ayurveda, we say you must eat six tastes every day, in every meal. And that's why, you know, the Indian thali is so delicious. You know, a bit of chutney for the sour. Of course, always a sweet. The acidic, the salty, the bitter. You know, the Westerners couldn't figure out why bitter. Well, we have sensors for eating bitter. That's why you love the karela and the neem, the bitter gourd. Uh, so, you know, someone I've come to know recently, Aaron Mayer, who works a lot on the gut microbiome and has written a book on the mind-gut connection. Um, I know he's bringing out a film for Netflix um, on connection, you know, that it's all about connection. And he writes, for decades, the mechanistic militaristic disease model set the agenda for medical research. As long as you could fix the affected mechanical part, we thought the problem would be solved. There was no need to understand its ultimate cause. We were just beginning to realize that the gut, the microbes living in it, the gut microbiota constitute one of the major components of these regulatory systems and the signaling molecules that they produce from their vast number of genes. So I, you know, I look at all these people who want to declare war against the microbe, but that's not just a war against the planet because most beings on this planet are microbes, but it's a war against us. We are 90% microbes. Our gut has 100 trillion microbes who have the most amazing intelligence. And our gut has sensors and those sensors need different foods. That's why a diet rich in different foods is necessary for our gut to work. The gut is now being called the second brain. More neurological activity is going on in the brain, in our gut than in this brain. And in fact, that brain is making this one run. That's why the whole issue of neurodegenerative diseases with the increase in bad diets, which is an assault on our gut microbiome. And, uh, and this is shifting our perception of not just who we are. We, we have to stop thinking of ourselves in anthropocentric terms of being superior and masters of other species who are just objects to be manipulated 